began listening to jazz when I was 15 years old, and I was really immediately attracted to the Tony and Elvin style that led into the Dejeunet style for me, which really comes into a modern, contemporary thing today. Um, a lot of it is based on alternating ride cymbal patterns and varying the comping around the drum set as opposed to a Max Roach, Art Blakey, Philly JoJo style, which is a straight ahead ride and snare drum bass drum comping. Uh, from those beginnings, I went to Berklee College of Music in the early 80s and then to the New England Conservatory where I got my masters. When I finished Berkeley, um, I immediately studied for a summer uh, with Elvin Jones. It was a scholarship set up by the National Endowment for the Arts and Modern Drummer. That experience got me into the conservatory where I began, began studying with uh, Bob Moses for a semester, and then I switched over to Miroslav Vitus, the bass player, and I ended up playing in a group with Miroslav and working with him both at his home and at the school. If anything, studying with Alvin was a clarification that what I was into was correct because up until that point a lot of teachers were really preaching the basics of ride cymbal pattern and comping that was coming directly out of a book. Um, by that point, it was 30 years after those books were written and I always had a bit of an issue with learning that way. Alvin's approach to teaching, which is a huge influence on my teaching, is really a conceptual approach and Elvin talked about concepts as to why he would do a particular thing, what it felt like to do that, how it sounded, and just the vibe generally of, of what he could get. It was amazing. I wish I could have studied with him longer and for more years and in fact years later when I was fully developed in my career as a teacher and as a performer, I wanted to go back and study with him because then I knew what was happening. I was very young then, you know. I, th I think studying with Elvin was probably the biggest influence on my teaching because my teaching has become purely conceptual. I use very little book work and I'm basically teaching the student to take responsibility for their playing. So when they play a particular example, I ask them how they feel about it, how did it sound to them, what they liked about it, what they didn't like about it. If we can determine what didn't work, we can delete it. If we can find out what they liked about it and it was working, then we can expand on that and improve. So conceptual is the way to go for me. Well, first of all, I think it's important that that everybody learns the foundation before they move forward. Um, you have to walk before you run. So I think even drummers who are playing in a contemporary style need to play straight ahead. But, on the other hand, I think straight ahead players who only want to play straight ahead have to take the blinders off in order to listen to what came post-1958. Because you can't not acknowledge the influence of Tony Williams and Elvin Jones and Jack Dejanet, for example. You really have to be pretty close-minded in order not to hear what happened past the early 60s, for example. So I think it's important that everybody open their mind, the progressive players going back for a strong foundation, and the straight-ahead players looking ahead to maybe push the limits of straight-ahead drumming. Well, I think if you're looking at the history of jazz, there's really two streams. There's a straight-ahead approach coming from the bebop mainstream, and then there's a contemporary thing coming from, you know, the middle to late 60s. And I think some people really enjoy listening to the drums in a particular way, for example, maybe more as a background instrument where you're a timekeeper, 
or maybe more as an instrument who's contributing to the soloist and to the general vibe of the tune. So I think you're attracted to either one and you sort of follow that route and that sort of determines where you want to go as a player as well. I've been endorsing Vic Firth drumsticks for at least 20 years and the reason I initially went to Vic was because of the feel of the stick in my hand. Um, I went through a whole stick process where I was trying to find the right stick for me starting with a 7A which led to a 5A which would led to an SD2 combo which ult ultimately led me to my final stick which I've been using for more than 15 years which is the 5B oddly enough a large stick but the, the feel of the wood, the hickory, is just unlike any other manufacturer. I love the shape of the, the bead and the taper of the shoulder. For me, it's the perfect stick. It always has been, and I'm sure it always will be. <laughs>